In this lecture, you'll learn how to create a flash pool aggregate through a lab demo. There's a couple of different ways that you can create a flash pool aggregate. You can either take an existing HDD only aggregate and add an SSD cache to it to convert it to a flash pool aggregate, or you can create a brand new flash pool aggregate from scratch. In this lecture, I'll show you the first way. We will convert an existing HDD only aggregate to flash pool. I've already opened up an SSH session to the cluster here, and let's see the aggregates that we've already got on the cluster. So I will say storage aggregate show. And there I can see that I've got aggregate zero for node one, I've got aggregate zero for node two, and I've got aggregate one for node one and node two. So we don't want to mess with aggregate zero, that's used for our system information. Aggregate one is used for our user data. So let's convert this first aggregate into flash pool. Let's see some information about the aggregate first. So I'll hit the up arrow to get my storage aggregate show command back again, and then say aggregate, and it is aggregate one underscore C1N1. And it's case sensitive, so I have to use the capitals there. So looking at the information about this aggregate, I can see that the storage type is HDD. There's 12 disks there. These are the disks making up the aggregate and the available size is 8.79 gigabytes and it's on node cluster 101. Let's scroll through the rest of the output here. I can see that the RAID type is RAID DP and right now hybrid is false. Hybrid shows whether it's a flash pool aggregate or not. Hybrid meaning it's got both HDD and SSD drives there in the aggregate. And right now it's not enabled. And that's why I can see that the total hybrid cache size is zero. Obviously if there's no cache there, there's no SSDs being added to this aggregate. So let's now convert this aggregate into flash pool. Obviously I need to have SSDs available to do that. So let's check if we do have SSDs available. So I will say storage disk show, and then this is gonna be for type SSD. And there that I can, I can see that I have got 14 SSD drives available in this lab environment. They're just about 500 megabytes in size. Okay, so let's add some of these SSDs to the aggregate as a cache. But actually the first thing that we have to do is convert the aggregate to a flash pool aggregate. The command to do that is storage aggregate, storage aggregate modify, and then the aggregate that I'm going to modify was aggregate one underscore C1N1. And then to convert it to flash pool, I say hybrid enabled and true. So I've now converted that to a flash pool aggregate. But if we have a look at the aggregate again, so I'll run my storage aggregate show command for the aggregate again and I will scroll down a page. I can see there's a change there. The RAID status has now changed and it is showing hybrid enabled there. But if I go back up to hybrid, I still see that as showing as false and the total hybrid cache size is still zero bytes. So what's going on with that? Well, when we added the hybrid enabled true command to the aggregate, We've enabled it for flash pool, but it's not actually a flash pool aggregate yet because we haven't actually added any SSDs. So that's what we need to do next. So let's add the SSDs. So I'll quit out of here and the command is storage aggregate and then add disks. 
and the aggregate I'm going to add these disks to is aggregate one underscore C one N one. I want to specify that it's SSDs. So I'll say disk type is SSD. How many drives am I going to add? In this lab environment, I'll say discount, just add three. And another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify the RAID type. So I can say RAID type RAID 4. Now, if we look up here higher, we can see that the HDD aggregate is RAID DP. And obviously, if this aggregate was made up of multiple RAID groups, they would all be configured to use RAID DP. They would all have two parity drives per RAID group. And whenever you add disks or RAID groups to an existing aggregate, obviously it has to be the same RAID type across all of those different RAID groups. But when we add an SSD cache for flash pool to an existing HDD aggregate, we can specify a different RAID type for the SSD RAID group. And the reason for this is, is that that cache is, it's going to be smaller and we're going to want to make the optimum use of the available space. So what we'll typically do for our flash pool SSD RAID group is configure that as RAID 4. So we get more usable space there. And it's fine. You can do that on your flash pool aggregates. You can have one RAID type on your HDD RAID groups. You can have a different RAID type on your SSD RAID groups. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to configure it as RAID 4 for my SSDs. I will hit enter and it's going to give me some information specifying that the disks are going to be added. And I can see that I'm going to have two SSDs added as data drives and one SSD for parity because this is RAID 4. So I'll say, yes, I do want to continue. Then let's see what changes have happened again. So I will again do my storage aggregate show and it's for aggregate, aggregate one underscore C one N one. And now if I scroll down a page, actually right on the front page, I can see that the storage type is hybrid. I'll scroll down a page and I see that hybrid is now true. I can see that my total hybrid cache size is 1000 megabytes because I've got two data drives there of size 500 meg each. So that gives me a usable cache of 1000 meg. I've still got that other 500 megabyte disk for the parity as well. Notice that the size of the aggregate is the same as when we started, 8.79 gigabytes, because the SSDs are used as a cache only. They don't add to usable size of the aggregate. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.